gonna be the death of me. It's gonna be the death of me. Henry played on this really uh, fantastic Fairbanks electric banjo. You will notice that this is a this is a tiny Fairbanks electric. Look how small this thing is. So um, let's get some quick measurements real quick. I'll show you all exactly how small this thing is. Um, I already did the measurement. I can tell you it's about a 21 inch scale from the nut to the 12th fret. There's that lovely 12th fret inlay. Um, the distance from the nut to the 12th fret is about 10 and 9 sixteenths, I believe. So that gives us approximately a 21 inch scale. Uh, pretty short scale little instrument. It's raining, I hope that's not messing the sound up and I hope this barn roof don't start leaking any worse than what it is. <laughs> Anyhow, Let's measure the uh, the head diameter for you. Let's see here. We're trying to do this quick. I didn't think the weather was going to deteriorate. So it, it's a it's basically a nine inch head. And here's the inside, the stamps and stuff. So you can see it says basically AC Fairbanks, you know, company in the middle, and then you've got two electric stamps. That's for the Fairbanks electric tone ring. And if y'all want to get a glimpse of that tone, man, look at the inside of this banjo. This is a fancy little banjo. So that, you can see in here, that sort of scalloped piece of metal, that is that patented electric tone ring. And really, I mean, for a nine inch short scale banjo, this little instrument sounds great. It's really one of the best tone rings anybody ever come up with. It's a great tone ring. Um, I believe the whole banjo is maple. It looks like it's a maple rim on a maple neck. It's just d it's stained with a dark amber stain. And then the front is just stained black. That's not actually an ebony overlay there. That's just stained black maple. Um, I have to point out these are modern tuners. These are not the tuners that would have come on this instrument. So these are the sort of typical black button Grover friction tuning pegs. I really like those pegs. And then this is the Grover with the the uh, sort of Ivoroid button. Yeah, they're not matching, but it's not a big deal. Uh, everything else on this banjo is pretty daggum original. It appears to have all of the original hardware. Um, got a really nice, I like these tail pieces. That's what's called an elite tail piece. Sort of the precursor to the no knot, I believe. And you'll notice I've got a correct solid maple, very light bridge. This is a copy of a Gibbs banjo bridge. This lovely bridge was made by Joel Hooks up in New Hampshire. I highly recommend Joel Hooks. He's really making the best, uh, most authentic historical bridges for these instruments. His website is banjothimble.com. Banjothimble.com. And you can get this lovely bridge or he has lots of other options i highly recommend getting that one thing i always point out too if you notice these hex bolts y'all hex bolts when you look inside a banjo that's an indication that the hex versus the um the slotted dome screw the hex bolt indicates usually um, a, a higher end fancier instrument also want to show off the heel of this banjo that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm not sure what the sort of name for that heel is. I think they call that a boat heel or a boat keel, I think. I'm not sure, but it basically looks like the bottom of a boat. A really fine instrument here. This banjo is not for sale. I've actually already sold it, so that's why I had to film it real quick, because I'm going to have to ship this banjo out. But periodically, from time to time, I get an instrument like this. And uh, we sell it uh, for as good as we can. Also, I'm noticing there's a serial number in here on the side of the dowel, and it matches the rim. So this is all original 
The serial number on the dowel and the rim is 2605 on this little electric banjo. Because it's so small, we're calling it a baby electric. I can't, couldn't find any documentation about these little small ones, but a lot of people would consider this like a child's banjo. But really, more often than not, when they made something this small in the 1890s, um, they were marketing it to women. So it would have been called, probably it was like a ladies model, but I mean, because why would you give a, a little kid something this fancy? This is a pretty fancy instrument. So I want to read just briefly about the Fairbanks Electric. I don't think I've done it yet. This is my go-to text for these sort of classic period banjos. This book is called America's Instrument, the Banjo in the 19th Century. It's by Jim Bowman and Philip Gura. So let's, I've got it marked. I'm going to go to it real quick and read y'all just a brief passage out of here. Okay. So the Fairbanks banjo's success was based in large measure on a new rim that Fairbanks patented in 1890. For this innovation defined the company's finest banjos for the next two decades. He called the line of instruments fitted with this device the electric. So that's what we're dealing with here. So that electric tone ring was patented in 1890. In his patent description of the new design, Fairbanks noted that the usual wood and metal construction of rims did not allow sufficient vibration to enable the instrument to give out a clear, bell-like tone. Thus, he designed his new banjo with a scalloped metal truss on top of the rim and a smaller brass rod atop that, over which the skin head was then stretched. So, that's they're talking about, you see that scalloped metal thing? And then there's, there's a, a piece of brass on top of that. That's what they're talking about. By the way, this is a really nice calfskin head on here. In really good condition. Okay. The open spaces between the truss bosses permit vibration of the rod, increasing the sound much more than if a solid band of metal were combined with the wooden hoop. In another version of the design described in the same patent, he suspended the brass rod over the wooden rim on metal studs for a similar effect, a design that became known as the Curtis Electric, named after Fairbanks' son, himself a prominent banjoist. I should link to that video. Y'all may remember uh, a few years ago I sold a Fairbanks Curtis Electric. So I'll link to that somewhere, maybe at the end of this video, if you want to check out the Curtis Electric. That was a cheaper design. Um, Okay, so the electric soon was the talk of the banjo world. Its tone is brilliant and resonant, as its inventor claimed. Um, the electric possessed great volume, and according to Fairbanks, the sweetest quality of tone, especially in the highest register. Uh, okay, I got one more thing I'm going to say about this. Um, despite the popularity of Fairbanks's electric, as well as the interest other banjo makers had in offering his line of instruments, Fairbanks did not attain his greatest success until the next century when, in 1901, he introduced to uh, what proved to be his most popular model, the White Lady. And uh, I've sold a Fairbanks White Lady here too, and uh, that is the one that most people want today. Uh, that's sort of the, the White Lady kind of is even more desirable than the electric, I guess. But anyhow, this is a great little banjo. I just wanted to show it off. And uh, if you appreciate this kind of material, if you like these videos, if you learned something, I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, become a Patreon supporter. It's only $2 a month, and you help me to keep doing these type of videos. Okay, everybody, thanks for looking.